Good morning, everybody. Live from San Francisco at the Apple iPhone announcement. This is Hangouts with James. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> There's only about two of us that we know of that aren't watching Apple right now. Uh, so <laughs> how you doing, Madeline? I'm doing great. Thanks. How are you? Oh, not too bad. You do not have an iPhone, do you? I do not. No. So are you excited about your iPhone 5 possibilities, or are you just not going to roll? Um, I am moderately interested in it. <laughs> uh -oh. Yeah, no, I'm not getting an iPhone. Okay. I'm getting okay. another Android. So today has been interesting for me. I am wearing my third shirt today, which is pretty sad. So it started <laughs> off, you ever froth milk with a, with a frother? Um, not you know frequently. how they work, right? Yeah. So I'm doing it this morning because I thought a little froth milk on my coffee would be nice. And my son says, oh, Dad, what are you doing? And I said, oh, you know, frothing some milk. And he goes, can I do it? <laughs> and I said, sure, what's the worst thing that can happen? So he's doing it very, you know, really good, actually. And I said, that's good. So what does he do? Pulls it out of the frother and oh. <laughs> it goes everywhere. And then I went to Starbucks after I dropped him off at school. And what do I do? I spill coffee on my shirt. So... Uh, I have water right now, so hopefully clear liquids the rest of today is, is on the path. Um, so today's going to be a little different show than normal. We don't have a guest, or maybe we're the guests on our own show. Uh, I thought it would be kind of fun to sort of switch this up rather than have some guy with a PhD talk about a startup, uh, which it seems that we've had a couple times, and just see what people you know want to talk about. So we set up this uh, Google Moderator. Uh, we had, I think, about 15 questions come in, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, people voted on it, and we've got uh, a whole bunch of them. I thought we'd just start at the top and go through them and see what happens. Uh, we're also in the IRC channel. Uh, if people have not logged into that yet, feel free to make comments, and I will be watching that and uh, tell you uh, that I agree that uh, you're right that I'm right. Yeah, and I'm doing a screen share right now of the, uh, the questions list, so you can, you can see them up here. I guess we will start at the top. Uh, James, what are your top five picks for startups in the geospace to keep an eye on in 2013? Well, I, I can't tell you guys that because if I told you, then you would invest them and I wouldn't make as much money as I will. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I was thought about this question and I started listing some ones and I had a little piece of, I don't know where I put my piece of paper. I was listing them and I thought, well, you know, these are good ones. And I thought, it's not so much these, these companies because lately it seems a lot of startups have just, you know, failed or they've gone away or gotten bought by somebody. So I think it's more... <clears throat> areas that I think people are going to succeed in in the next year, at least, you know, to, to take off. Maybe they will crash like most of these other ones have. Um, the one that, that I'm probably most interested to see in this space is some sort of uh, API to store data. And now, now, I know there's there's Google uh, Maps and there is uh, ArcGIS Online, but I, you know, I'm thinking something more along the lines of Simple Geo. Uh, Simple Geo had its issues, and so I'm not going to, you know, go into those right now. But I think there's got to be some sort of way for people to store data that don't know how. And there's lots of, you know, Google's got different ways, and I guess you have Microsoft and Azure has a way, but nobody's really made a really simple way uh, to get this data in. So I, I'm, I'm a little curious to see if there's going to be this startup that comes up with this great way to store our data. You know, I sort of make fun. I'll put points on a map and storing them as points. Um, but I, I sort of think that's still one area there can be uh, some disruption in. Uh, but of course, Google and Esri are there waiting for somebody to do disrupt and then just copy what they do and destroy you. So uh, I don't know so much about that. The other one that um, uh, another one that I'm sort of interested in is, <laughs> and I think you sort of put this uh, in my uh, list was uh, UAVs, and uh, you know p companies that are creating these UAVs to basically, uh, for one, take pictures, uh, aerial imagery, uh, which is a lot easier than hiring a satellite company because uh, you can get them practically live. Uh, the other thing is, uh, Madeline, uh, if you could share that link, there was a uh, taco delivery. Uh, oh, taco copter, yeah. Taco copter. So, <laughs> it, but of course, you know, the government being the government destroys the small businessman and doesn't let taco copter take off because the FAA doesn't like the idea that tacos are getting delivered by a UAV helicopter. Mm -hmm. um, but I like that idea. I mean, uh, we ordered a pizza just this weekend, and you know, the the pizza delivery guy comes in his Toyota 
beat up Toyota pickup, which I think is somewhat of a cliche, but, you know, he, he comes and delivers the pizza. I'm sort of laughing because he's got this beat up Toyota, you know, in my driveway. Um, but I like the idea that the pizzas just come via, you know, a copter. So, you know, it, it could be a, a really cool way. <laughs> Someone in IRC said lobster copper, copter. See, that makes more sense than tacos because, you know, you really, a lobster comes lo you know, on the boat and you can put it, you know, get the, you, the copter and then they, so you have to live kind of close, you know, to the, I guess, to the main uh, harbor. Mm -hmm. And Maine is in the state, not Maine is in Maine. <laughs> Gosh, I hate the English language. It makes it so difficult. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I guess from what I've read, the F FAA is going to change the rules on this. Uh, I don't know if that's going to let Taco Copter uh, exist, but at least you'll be able to use one of these UAVs to take pictures of your site plan. Um, who knows? Uh, the other, the other, the, you know, I guess I don't have five startups. Uh, I've got three sort of concepts here. The other concept that I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit interested in is online geospatial analysis. Um, you know, I, I've sort of talked about this, I think, in the past on my blog. And the idea that I could have my ArcGIS and somehow offload geoprocessing off to a server somewhere uh, becomes problematic because you have to have the data up in the cloud um, mm -hmm. before you do it. But I think some of this analysis is, is small data sets um, that you can, you, know, you, can, you can basically pull out parts and, and send them to uh, some sort of service as it goes along and just start streaming it up there. Uh, I think that might be kind of an interesting thing as well because we just there's just the idea of me purchasing uh, arc arc infos for everybody in my organization i think those days are over i think a lot of people sort of wish those days were over um, but you know i've been saying those days are over for about 5 years now so uh, <laughs> who knows so those are sort of my my three areas i think i'd like i think i'm going to see some some um, things in 2013 but as i always say i thought google earth would be a failure so um, I take what I say with a grain of salt, though I want a uh, taco copter. <laughs> yeah, I do too. Uh, Paul just shared a link here. I'll, I'll put it on screen share. Um, it's FAA's impending rule on small UAVs may usher in a new era of civil aerial warfare. So it could be, could be coming up here. Uh, we'll share that link in the show notes. Yeah, I, I think, you know, I think it's... It's driving the cost down of getting local imagery. You know, that's I think that's going to be a really great way to do it. Uh, it's, you know, a lot of these uh, um, commercial uh, engineering companies would probably love to have this stuff. I mean, you could fly aerial imagery of your worksite every hour if you wanted to. <laughs> you know, as opposed to you know hiring a, a company to fly out there. I you know I don't think it's going to make any dent in the Digital Globes business or GOI if, if they're still independent, but. Uh, a lot of the, these local companies that they still exist, where you hire, um, you know, the, these these uh, planes to go out and fly. I, I don't think so. Uh, people are saying Taco Copter was a hoax. See, I I, I kept looking that up. It it wasn't on April first, so I'm just going to believe it's not a hoax. And you guys can you know hate on Taco Copter. That's fine. <laughs> I, I get the impression that it wasn't a hoax. It was just like a big idea that three dudes had and talked about, and then there was a lot of talk about it because it's clearly awesome. But I don't think it ever got very far. Yeah, um, see, people, they're just haters on the idea of a taco copter. <laughs> I think it's exciting. I'd like to see a cake copter personally, but uh, maybe someday. <laughs> right. So, wait, as far as startups go, what about Space Curve? A lot of talk about that. Are you excited about the big data? analytics there? Well, you know, big data is one of those things where we keep, you know, data is huge, you know, and I just, big, I don't want to say that I don't believe in big data because I believe it exists. I, I just, it's one of these type things where people start, it's like the cloud. Everyone just says cloud, 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 and it doesn't really mean anything. Um, mm -hmm. Big data is kind of the same thing, um, but I think it gets back into where I was talking about analytics. Um, that that's sort of the the hope is how do you create um, analytics to help you work through large data sets, small data sets. Um, that's why I think they're interesting because they're focused on the analytical part as opposed to just let's aggregate some large data. Hmm. You know, so 
Okay, yeah, well, yeah. we're like 11 minutes in, and we have 14 questions left. So. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I don't think we'll, yeah, we need to leave plenty of time for me to talk about the Giants. <laughs> um, so the second question is, uh, after Python, what's the handiest programming language for a GIS person to learn? Uh, after Python, right? I thought about this last night. So for me, it's probably Perl. <laughs> Just because I learned Perl when I started off, I was a Perl and AML guy when I started off. Um, I don't know if you want to learn Perl in, in 2013. <laughs> so it comes back to maybe what do you want to do with 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 your language? You know, if you're going to be a web developer, uh, I probably need to know some JavaScript, right? Maybe some Ruby, some PHP, some some .NET or whatever the heck uh, Microsoft is doing these days. Uh, if you're going to be doing some analytics. Uh, you know, some geoprocessing, you know, obviously Python's important. You probably want to learn something else to go along with it, such as R uh, mm -hmm. or, you know, um, maybe some sort of COBOL or Fortran, <laughs> depending on what you're connecting to on the back end. Uh, if you're doing development on clients, you know, obviously iPhones and Macs or Objective-C, you know, Java doesn't hurt on Android, uh, Windows, uh, I don't know what Windows Phone uses, they're whatever net something. Um, you can't hurt to learn C. Yeah, people are saying JavaScript. Chris is absolutely right. You know, I, it comes back to if you if you had to learn something else after Python, I would probably say learn JavaScript because it can't hurt. <laughs> you know, uh, most of these other ones sort of get down in niches that may be applicable to one or two things. But as I said, if you're not going to ever do web development and you're worried about creating apps on Windows, you probably want to learn something that allows you to create apps on Windows. You know? Maybe R. Yeah, I was going to say R is a good one for statistics. So that, mm -hmm. you know, if you're doing analytics, R is probably, uh, Chris says before Python, he would learn JavaScript. Yeah, Chris is Python on the brain, so, or uh, JavaScript on the brain. But, you know, it comes back, that's what Chris does. Chris works in, in, on the web and you know, JavaScript works. So there you go. Cool. Next question, right? What yeah, next, next question. Can I replace ArcGIS Desktop with QGIS? Why? Why? Why would you yeah. do that? Um, no, I just, no, that I, you don't have to answer why you would do that. But <laughs> that's sort of, you know, the point. Uh, someone answered Dojo and for language. Bah. Um, I use QGIS more than anything else right now, but that's because I'm a Mac and there's no ArcGIS for Mac. Um, I can pretty much assure myself that if Esri had ArcGIS for Mac, I'd probably be using it every day. You know, that's just me because I've used it for so long, I'm comfortable. Not that QGIS isn't great, you know, and I've actually gotten better with QGIS, so who knows, maybe if ArcGIS eventually comes out, maybe I would use QGIS more. Um, it just comes to personal preference. If you've got some sort of religious thing against proprietary software, well, you probably want to go QGIS. Uh, if you're comfortable uh, working with with ArcGIS and you know where you know all the stuff is, why change? You know, if, if it's a money thing, I get it. Um, probably the bottom line is you can do almost everything that most people do with ArcGIS with, with QGIS. Um, you just have to make sure that it's worth it, you know. Uh, if you've got all these MXDs and all these geoprocessing scripts already set up, there's a cost of converting those over to, um, you know, pure Python and and uh, QGIS projects. You know, if you want to take that on, go for it. Uh, most of us don't have that time or effort, and you know, as a consultant, you use whatever your your clients use. Mm. But uh, Chris says, how is QGIS with publishing maps these days? Actually, it's gotten a lot better. Um, I've actually been using uh, Mapnik for a lot of my map creation in QGIS because I like the, uh, the symbology uh, control. Uh, maybe that might be kind of a cool way uh, for a lot of users to get into. You know, as I was thinking, we were talking with Gretchen a while back that you know when I started out doing cartography, it was all AML and ArcPlot. And if anybody who's ever used Arc, you ever used ArcPlot? No, you never used ArcPlot, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. see, if you've ever used ArcPlot, it was the most worthless piece of junk application ever. And it was just murder creating maps. But AML allowed you to control everything just, you could put it exactly where you wanted it. And then ArcGIS 8 came out, and all of a sudden, every time you move the map, 
<laughs> yeah, Bill's like, yeah, everyone, see, everyone says arc plot sucks. But it gave <laughs> you that fine grained control. Then arc map came out, and every time you panned the map around, it's like your labels would change. And it just drove you absolutely nuts. So that's what I like about uh, tools such as Mapnik that give you that ability, yeah, SML. For, there's always an arc info uh, or a PC arc info guy out there. But it gave you that finite control to place things exactly where you want. And that's what I like about QGIS mm -hmm. is it integrates that. So Esri's probably got their own tools. They've got their, uh, uh, what's their, what's their cartography tool? Map, oh, Mapplex. Uh, but oh, again, yeah. it's still built on one of these things where it's an algorithm that runs and every time you zoom and move the, the map around, it can, can change unless you lock everything down. So I, that I don't is know. pretty handy for labeling. I've used it and I quite like it. So. Yeah, cool. And uh, let's see, uh, Luke reminds us that uh, we also have Open Geoda, which is an excellent geostatistical analysis Absolutely. package. If you guys have not checked out Open Geoda, you need to do that. Uh, go ASU, by the way, for creating that. Mm -hmm. Right? That's not the shocker, that's the pitchfork. Got to know, you got to know it, right? Um, yeah, labeling in 10.1 is pretty nifty. 10.1 uh, actually has gotten better, and uh, most of that is because Mapnik is now pretty much in uh, all levels of licensing. Uh, but, and, you know, maybe that's just me being me crusty Mapplex. old. Mapplex. Okay. Yeah, because why does everyone yeah. name everything Geo and Map, and it's like, I need to work in a new, new line of work, I guess. No, oh, well. What's your next question? Uh, what are your favorite resources for GIS information? Weo Geo. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Is there any other place? <laughs> uh, I guess that question, what are you, what are you looking for? You know, uh, I created uh, Planet Geospatial for myself to stay on top of geospatial news. So a lot of times I will go there and find out, you know, what, what news is going on. Um, you know, Twitter doesn't hurt to type in some uh, hashtags to find news. Uh, for data, data is one of those things which is hard. You know, I know there's there's Wio Geo, there's Geo Commons, there's ArcGIS Online uh, that have lots of data sets. Mm -hmm. uh, and the uh, Esri database and has some good scientific data sets. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of stuff out there. There's just no good aggregator yet. So um, it'd be nice for somebody to create a nice aggregator to go find all this stuff, and you can just type, you know, like we type into Google saying, you know, find me uh, San Francisco Giants updates, which I know you guys all type into Google, uh, and you get all these great web pages, beautiful web pages on the San Francisco Giants. It'd be nice to be able to type something like that into a search engine and find geospatial data. Um, you know, maybe we'll be there one day. All right. Next question. Uh, which is somewhat related. What books do you suggest reading to get a better handle on geospatial tech? Books. Do people still read books? <laughs> um, <laughs> the you know there's a there's a couple there's a book I just reread here um, that I thought was really good. I read this when it first came out. Um, mm. Open Street Map. This is done by the guys in Europe. It's actually a really good book if you're if you're trying to get an Open Street Map. I like it because it's got pretty pictures, and it's kind of a neat way. If you're looking to get a um, handle on how to use OpenStreetMap, this is a great book. So um, I read it when it came out about a year ago, and I just reread it, and I still think it's great. Um, other books, I love this book. If you're trying to get into statistics with Python, Baseball Hacks, this is the book because it uses Perl, it uses Python, it uses R, plus it's about baseball. Uh, it's really good. It, you know, it, it talks about you know creating these scatter plot. I don't know if you can see that, but scatter plots. You know, being able to create those with uh, tools such as R and Python and stuff. So it's kind of fun from a baseball perspective. The only issue is, you know, some of the instructions talk about using Microsoft Access. Uh, <laughs> so you got to have Windows. Uh, but if if that if you have that, it's kind of a fun book to do that. Uh, the other book that I just Gave to a friend, and I think I, I think he just handed it back, right? This old book, I think it came out with a second edition, Web Mapping Illustrator. Remember this book? You don't remember this book? Tyler Mitchell wrote this a long time ago. Uh, it's kind of an interesting look at Map Server and some of those other tools, and it I think it's well written uh, because it, it goes into a lot of what you need to know 
to start using uh, open source tools. Uh, for Esri people, uh, probably this book, because I can't ever get rid of it. I've got like 10 copies of these. You guys remember this one? All Esri developers? <laughs> Madeline's like, what is this? But yeah. I can tell you right now that uh, anybody like Bill Dollins and Brian Flood and any of those guys, they were given hundreds of copies of this stupid book. And uh, I build a Ford out of it sometimes. <laughs> I should just toss it, but it's such a bad book, I can't get rid of it. So those are my, and of course, uh, oh, I don't know why I still have this, but, right, we could got to pimp this one, right? Andrew uh... Turner, Neo Geo Introduction to Neo Geography, never goes out of, out of print because it's just timeless. Yeah, and our, our guest we had on about a month ago, Gretchen Peterson, has a couple of good books. On yes, I should have grabbed her books. I got them up here oh. now. So uh, Another good book that I like, if you're trying to, to do um, anything with GIS, is Roger Tomlinson's book. This is a good book. Uh, it's written from an Esri perspective, but it's still a really good book if you're trying to figure out how to model GIS at a company. Um, it's kind of fun. Hmm. Okay, um, great. So this next one is interesting. Uh, show me the money or monetizing web maps for the rest of us. Monetizing web maps. So there, we, you can do that with Wio Geo. We have a marketplace to allow you to monetize web maps. So you could load your web maps up into Wio Geo and sell them. That's one way to do it. Um, I don't know if the question is so much, can you, you know, can I, can I put a map up and then have ads come on it? You know, I don't know. Uh, I do you see ads on maps when you use them? I don't. Well, I've got so many ad blockers, I don't see many. Oh, ads. see, you're one of those. <laughs> uh. I was funny. I was just where was I? I was I was on somebody's website and I clicked on a map to see where they were, and it was an old. Uh, it was old, the old MapQuest. It's like they were still using the old MapQuest API. And it had all these icons for Holiday Inns all over it. <laughs> it's like obviously Holiday Inn had paid MapQuest a lot of money to put little Holiday Inn logos all over it. And I just, I, it was so hard to navigate the darn map that uh, I couldn't use it. So, uh, you know, monetizing web maps, oh, man, that's, you know, Google's trying to do that and they can't even do it. Um, you know, Google Maps can display ads. Um, hmm. but I, do, do people really want ads on a map? Well, Luke's got a suggestion that we take a look at how APIs were monetized. He's got a, a link here about um, API business models in the IRC, which uh, yeah, you know the handy. yeah the the APIs yeah, shoot, you know I guess it all business models are tough to figure out, right? And if your business model is going to be I'm going to monetize my web map to be successful. You're probably not going to do that. You know, I, I still have a, an ad on my blog. Uh, maybe five years ago, I was making you know almost a thousand dollars a month on ads, and now if I make a hundred bucks a month, it's a good month. It's just you know, it's just it's more. I just am too lazy to take the ad off. <laughs> you know, so there's just not much money in that. You know, I would just say. Paul points out that uh, Google Maps for mobile does display ads, so there's some of that going on. So when every time someone clicks on it, you may get one-tenth of a penny, right? It's tough to make money, you know, and I guess that, that I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I have yet to see somebody making money off of selling web maps. Maybe Google does to some extent. Maybe Microsoft does to some extent that people license them. But, you know, those are pretty big companies, and they're barely making money, you know? Time to find a new business, I guess. Ooh. <laughs> All right. Uh, next question, then. Let's see. Uh, do you think Esri should push their APIs more as to usurp the Google Maps API dominance? Usurp, huh? Ooh. Well, Canadians, right? They use big words like usurp. Um, gosh, this is a weird one because when you're on an API and you've already developed your application, it's really hard to change. There's got to be something disruptive to make you change. Um, I'm not so sure Esri stuff is disruptive yet. It's more just to allow existing Esri users to to use you know their APIs out on the web. Uh, we've seen some Google users uh, move to OpenStreetMap uh, because of questions on licensing. 
uh, you know, there's been a couple big ones, but I wouldn't say there's been this mad rush away from 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 Google. And I, I don't know if I've ever seen anybody say they're leaving Google for for Esri. Uh, so uh, should they push it? I think they're pushing it, but Esri's focus is to keep on their own users. I'm not so sure they're trying to grow the bubble out. They're just trying to to make sure that whoever's in their existing bubble doesn't leave. So. I don't see anybody messing with Google Maps API dominance unless Google goes absolutely crazy, <laughs> you know? Hmm. Uh, okay, well, we had one comment uh, to the last question, which I'll read here. GIS and 8 said, I've thought about giving away GPSs that pop up billboardish ads based on what's nearby. Could be a good business model. Yeah, it wasn't that what what Foursquare was going to be, you know, the idea that I'm walking around and all of a sudden my phone vibrates and it says, hey, there's beer, <laughs> you know. Um, I, I think people sort of think uh, that's, you know, fun, but, you know, in the end of the day, people get really nervous when their phone starts buzzing and telling them where they are. So. Okay. Uh Here's a question. Will HTML5 JS apps eventually surpass native apps in the GIS mobile space? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, right now, no. You know, right now, I think long term, I look at native apps as sort of like Flash was. It's sort of this step towards to some future where browsers become applications. They're not there right now. Uh, they may not be there in the next five years, uh, but if, it just eventually everything's going to be web apps. You know, I, I honestly believe that. But right now, I mean, clearly, uh, I, I think Facebook was just saying just the other day that one of their biggest strategic mistakes they ever made was was doing HTML5 apps instead of native apps on mobile devices. So, you know, that's that's what's going on. You know, you have to. You have to think that, yeah, see, someone said Zuckerberg's big mistake, betting on HTML5. I'm not sure it's so much betting on HTML5. It's just using it for things it's not ready for. And eventually, I don't see how we're not going to be on, on, on browser-based apps. Um, yeah, good time, right? Yeah, because Zuckerberg. Yeah, well, at the time, everybody was thinking, you know, I can develop once on a web app and it'll work on Android, Windows, iOS. I'm done. I don't have to worry about it. Uh, but the, honestly, you, you know, you can't post pictures. You, there's a whole lot of things you can't do because of limitations, especially uh, because, you know, like iOS, for example, I can't upload photos from the browser. So you have to have, a, you know, a, a native app. Okay, James, we have like, we're running low on time oh. and we have six questions left. So do you want to do like a lightning round thing? Where you Let's a do a answer? lightning round thing. I can do this. Okay, cool. Um, this is, I guess, a comment that you can respond to. You've got to become a good developer before you can be good at GIS. Do you agree? No, Disagree? Uh, I don't think so. I, you know, it depends. Again, it depends on what you want to do. You know, if I'm going to be a biologist, I'm going to be running analysis on on where the, you know the the red cockaded woodpecker is, or or the uh, you know the gnat catcher is. I probably you know it probably doesn't hurt to know some scripting, but it's more important that I'm familiar with the data and know what's going on. Um, yeah, that totally makes sense to me. Yeah. Next question: Is there money in GIS? No. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> that's too late. I, there's money anywhere, you know. It's just you have to figure out what you want to do. If you know, uh, we could all make money. Probably more money being gash or uh, garbage men. They get paid a lot of money. But do you want to touch garbage all day? No. So. <laughs> all right. Uh, what made you, James, want to go into the GIS geospatial field? Ooh. Uh, it's sort of funny. I wanted to be a city planner. How exciting does that sound? Can you imagine me as a city planner at some local government? It's scary, right? <laughs> I was doing that was for the city of Mesa in Arizona, and mid-decade census came out. They dumped a a big Spark, I guess it was a Spark 10 workstation, Arc Info 5, on my desktop, and all these old people said, Shh, I ain't learning this. And I said, sure, that's back when they had documentation. So I picked up ArcGIS and away I went and 
I guess the rest is history, right? Hmm. Um, okay, let's see. Why do some GIS pros continue to hang on to the outdated distinction between GIS professionals and GIS users? You know, 10 years ago, GIS was this big, magical, mythical place that was sort of in these cubicles in the corner, and you really couldn't get near them. They would just, you'd sort of walk up and say, I need a map, and some big fat guy with a neck beard would be like, no, you can't come in. We're going to make these maps. Uh, that Those days have changed a little bit, but those guys that control still like they like to put labels on people so I'm a GIS professional I have a GISP I know you know Linux very basic Linux commands or Unix commands and you don't um, but reality of the situation is everybody's making maps these days and they just need you know basically they need to get over themselves right <laughs> Oh, I've got a good comment here, uh, Luke from Luke again. Uh, at Woods Law, any applications that can be written in JavaScript will eventually be written in JavaScript. I can't so argue with that. All right, it's a law. You can't how, argue with the law. How qu how quickly will that happen, though? That's the question. And right now, you know, uh, he's still got to go native. All right, we got two more questions, both of which are baseball related. So I know how do these baseball questions fall to the bottom? I figured people would be all over these. <laughs> okay, uh, why does James think the San Francisco Giants are going to win with the World Series again? Because they're awesome. They're you know, they got they got great pitching. They they can actually hit this year. Uh, the Dodgers suck. They're in the NL West. It's easy. Okay, right. and who in the AL East would you rather face in the World Series? The Rays, because they suck. But the Tampa Bay Rays aren't making the they're not making the playoffs. So I guess I guess the Yankees, because the Yankees have been kind of the, yeah the Dodgers are now the Boston Red Sox exactly. Um, I guess the I guess the Yankees because they're sort of disappointing. You know, I I, I guess I fear the Orioles a little bit because they're kind of the hot team. Uh, they're sort of like, I guess, the last two years, the uh, uh, the Texas Rangers always got hot and would make the World Series, and I'm a little worried about that with the, with the, the Orioles. So. <laughs> okay, that's it for the questions. That's it. Yeah. Oh boy. So, right? What happened to the loan? Yeah. See, who knows? The Rangers. Uh, there's so many. Uh, well, hey, Chris, how how about those Rockies, right? <laughs> Whatever happened to the Rockies, that's what I want to know. They used to be so good, and now yeah, Madeline's like, why are we talking about baseball? I always give the Rays a better chance of making the playoffs than the Yanks. Mm, I don't know about that. The Rays have, the Rays are one of those teams, for people that aren't familiar with the Tampa Bay Rays, they get everybody excited, and then they fall off the, yeah, too low, yeah. Okay, so everybody gets injured. And then, but the Rays are, you know, for those that don't know, Tam, uh, Wheel Geo came out of Tampa, and so a lot of Wheel Geo people are fans of the Tampa Bay Rays. I hear a lot of talk about the Rays in this office in Portland, and, Oregon. So. And not so much right now, right? They're kind of disappointed because it's it's sad. Yeah. yeah. So we will see, but you guys will all be excited to know the Giants are making the World Series again. So two out of three years, world champs. All right. Oh, we're over. Yeah, we are. Uh, so that's it. Um, hope, I think we had a little fun. It was a kind of a different thing this week. Uh, I'd like to do these every once in a while just to, to have fun. Uh, next week, we've got a guest again. Uh, we're bringing back uh, the first guest. Steve Citropusti of Red Hat is going to join us, and we're going to talk. We don't know what we're going to talk about yet. I think Steve and I are going to argue about uh, spatial light. He's a big supporter. I am not. I, that should be a, very exciting for half an hour hearing two uh Two neckbeards argue about uh, spatial light, right? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not do that. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, the guest we were supposed to have next week is Pumped a Week. Uh, it's going to be Paul Ramsey of Open Geo. So that should be really exciting. So uh, Paul's traveling and he can't make it, but we're going to do it in two weeks. So that should be lots of fun. So make sure you turn in next week for. Uh, some Red Hat discussion, I guess, and in two weeks, we'll have Paul Ramsey on. So, <laughs> Chris, as long as he brings his screen fun. Yeah, I don't think there's a problem with Steve bringing his screen fun. Uh, he's, he's, when he's got time on his hands, he's dangerous, I guess. So, again, thank you, everybody, for uh, taking time, and uh, 
Did they release the iPhone 5 yet? Do you know? I don't. I haven't been, I haven't been paying attention to you. No, guys. I haven't either. <laughs> you know, we're missing out. I even have Twitter off, so oh well. All right. Well, thanks, everyone. Yep. Take care, guys. Have a great week.